Hello everyone and welcome to 2019. This is Anne. Uh, welcome back to my crafty channel where I talk about uh, books, reading, cross stitch, knitting, spinning, random other things. Uh, I hope everybody had a great holiday season and if you're new to my channel, welcome. Glad that you stopped by to check me out and if you're a returning visitor, as always, Thank you for taking the time to visit with me again. Um, I'm always happy to have your comments and questions and thumbs up and all that good stuff. Um, today is Saturday. It is the 5th of January, 2019. I hope that the holidays treated y'all well. We'll do just a really quick life update. Um, we are good here. We had a very quiet uh, Christmas, just my husband and I, which was really, really nice. Um, yeah, we had a monster storm come through here the day after Christmas. Well, let me back up. We actually had three separate days of snowfall. The third one, which happened New Year's Eve into New Year's Day, was the biggest of them, but all told, um, we got just under two feet of snow here. So pretty much we just shoveled. We shoveled and then we had another snowstorm and then we shoveled and then we had another snowstorm that we went out and shoveled multiple times for. Um, things are still not exactly back to normal up here. My husband was supposed to fly out, so New Year's Day was the, the Tuesday and then he was gonna fly out Thursday and because of bad weather in Dallas that they were expecting, they had already put delays on his flights and it was just, it was crazy. So he got on the phone, tried to switch his uh, travel plans to Friday, yesterday, and they were so booked with people who had gotten bumped because of the storm Monday into Tuesday that they didn't have any flights. So he's actually flying back to DC today and I suspect we'll probably have at least a brief interruption when he gets on his connecting flight out of Houston. So anyway, um, we had some really nice dinners. We sat and read in the evenings. We enjoyed having a fire because it was also very cold here. Um, temperatures down in the very low single digits, like between zero and three degrees Fahrenheit in overnight, and then teens to t low twenties. Um, today I've already been out. It's about ten thirty. Oh, quarter of eleven. Uh, so I've already been out and we ran up to the grocery store and went to the post office, did some stuff in town that I needed to get done. And it's mid twenties here, so it's still cold, but because of the sun and because of our high altitude and because of the fact that we don't have a lot of humidity here to sort of dissipate the sun, I'm hoping that we'll get a lot more uh, melt and it won't be quite so slick coming in and out of our driveway. Um, which we did shovel, but you know, it's gravel, so it's kind of hard to really completely clear it. Anyway, that was my holiday. It was lovely. We talked to family. Um, like I said, we had just some really nice dinners. It was quiet. Uh, I read a ton, which I will talk about in my book section. And I did a bunch of crafting, so all good, in my opinion. Um, so let's go ahead and I think that's it for life updates. Everything else here is just normal stuff as it is. Um, let's go ahead and we'll get started on all of the craft things, which I know you guys are here for. So we're going to start off with knitting. So I have, as of last night, I have finished all but one piece in my Viking collection that will be coming out in February. Um, I've gotten, and, and for that one I have basically the cuff of sleeve one and then sleeve two to knit and then it's done. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, I got most stuff blocked. I'm working on pattern grading. More information to come on that as it rolls out, but that will launch like mid-February. So about six weeks from now. We're fairly far out. Um, then over, 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 why is that hard to say? Use your words. Over the holidays, um, I started a new personal knitting project. If you watched my previous video, I think I talked about the fact that I had been going to knit the Northanger Abbey mittens from 
one of the Jane Austen Knits interweave collections. And I had pulled some hand spun to do that. It's a natural brown, two fourth, two ply. Some lights it's sort of brown, some lights it's sort of gray. It's kind of in between those two things. Anyway, I thought it would be fine for the, the mittens, but in knitting it, it's coming out really more as a worsted weight and not as a DK weight. And even the smallest size that I cast on was going to be monstrously big. And I was knitting it as a donation for the orphanage up in Russia. So the kids are not that big, and I thought, well, it, this is, I mean, it's, it's huge on me. It, they don't have anyone this is going to fit. So regrouped a little, and I decided to go with this piece called Jamie's Shawl. So I'm using this for the first quarter craft along that I'm hosting in Willy Wonka Fibers, which is for literary themed pieces. Now, I don't think, if we want to get really technical about it, that this shawl has anything to do with Jamie Frazier and Outlander, but it is named Jamie's Shawl, so I'm going with it as literary themed. Um, this pattern is by Cozy Up Designs. It is available on Ravelry. As always, I will put a link to all that good stuff that I talk about below. Um, it is pretty basic shawl. It is worsted weight. It's got um, garter stitch. It's got a textured pattern. It's got eyelets. It's got a row of bobbles. Um, and then you repeat that down here. So I cast on for this on New Year's Eve in the evening while we were sitting listening to some music. Um, and I've been working on it little bits and pieces over the holiday week. And so, or weekend I should say. So I am currently down to right about there on the pattern. And let me show you what that looks like. It's almost getting too big for these needles, but I think you guys can still... Well, maybe kind of, sort of. Hang on, let's get this rearranged. Okay, so this is the center, center back. And this is what the textured section looks like. It's just slip stitches. And the next garter stitch ribbed uh, section, the row of eyelets, more garter stitch. Here are the bobbles, and I'm just starting the next section that's garter stitch. So yeah, it's gonna be good sized, and it is nice and squishy and warm. I never knit worsted weight shawls, and that may change in the future. Uh, just saying, because this is, I mean, it's knitting up so quickly compared to lace weight, obviously, or even fingering weight. Um, so I am 99.9% .9 sure that I do have enough yardage to finish all of it, but obviously these rows down here take a lot of, eat up a lot of real estate. Um, they go through the yarn pretty quickly, but I thought, you know, if I had to, I could skip this final row of the textured and just end it right there if it looked like I was gonna be running out. So once I get through the garter stitch, section, the eyelets, I'll weigh my yarn and see how much I have and how much I'm eating up per row. And then if I have to, I can delete out that bottom edge and just do seeds, the seed stitch border and then cast off. So it's a fun knit. It knits up quickly. Um, lots of different stuff going on in it. And then you can, the patterns change very frequently. So with that plus the worsted weight yarn, it's a pretty zippy knit. So if you've got, I think it takes about 600 yards of worsted, 600, 650, something like that. If you've got two or three skeins of worsted laying around, you're not sure what to do with them, I'm going to recommend this, this one. It's a fun knit, and it's pretty straightforward. And it gives you a lot of different stuff to work on in it. So like if you've never done bobbles, they're not hard, they're just fiddly, and there's only one row of them. So, you know, you could try them out and kind of nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay, so that is knitting. Uh, uh, nope, I lie. Wait, I'm so used to not having any knitting to talk about. Um, if you follow me on Instagram under Wooly Wonka Fibers, which is my business, um, and that's kind of where I keep my knitting updates in terms of Instagram photos versus my Little Bird Stitcher account, which is for cross-stitch and books. 
Um, you'll see that I decided to put together a Make 9 in 9 uh, collection, and I am going to attempt to insert the mosaic I created of those nine projects here. And what you'll see when you look at that is kind of a weird mix of stuff, but here's what I decided to do. Last year, uh, last fall, no, fall of 2017, we had our whole downstairs flooring redone and I redid all the stuff that was my storage units. I got a bunch of the, they're kind of long storage units and they have the 12 by 12 cubby holes in them. Like you have a kindergartens where the kids put their shoes and their coats and stuff like that or they restack toys. And so this size bin fits in each of those. And so I have one section that's yarn, personal yarn, and then I actually have two sections that are hand spun, which is why I'm always trying to get my hand spun spun down. It just takes a ton of space. Anyway, so I was looking at what I had for my personal yarns, and as always, I am on a quest to get that stash whittled down as well, the yarn, my yarn end of things. And so I thought to myself, well, what if I took one of those bins, excuse me, uh, what if I took one of those bins and most of them are organized by weight. So I have, I think it's two that just have sock yarns in them. And then I have one that's, um, it's still fingering weight, but it's not sock type blends. Like it's um, like Angora and silk sock weight, but I would never use it, it for socks. Um, and then I don't have as much stuff that's the larger gauge yarns. And so... Sometimes I have like sport and DK in one. I sometimes I have DK and worsted in one. I don't think I have any bulky. I may have two skeins of bulky, but that's it. So anyway, um, I pulled this bin out just like randomly. It was in the top right hand corner and I opened it to see what was in it. And I'm going to just show you that guys that really quickly and then talk about um, what, how and why I'm doing the make nine and 19. I basically thought nine projects I could, I could knit nine projects out of personal stash this year. I've got some great help. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Toby, for knitting some samples for me to just like free me up from the mental grind of garments. Because I have a lot of garments that I've already knit this year. Um, so the, the items, excuse the crinkling. The items in this bin are either things that were left over from a larger garment project or they're things that I was maybe gifted a skein of or I just have a skein. I'm not even sure why. Um, so for instance, like I have two skeins of flywheel. Um, this is a sport weight yarn. I knit a sweater out of it for last fall's filament magazine. I love it. I love I love the sweater. I wear the sweater all the time. This is a gorgeous kind of heathered Tweety Brown called Gatehouse. Um, you know, so like I have enough to do a pair of mittens or a hat with it. All of the projects that are in that mosaic, which I hopefully uploaded for you guys, I will link um, in the descriptive description below. But I will also put a link to my uh, Ravelry page that has my queue because what I did is I went in and I cleared the 600 odd things out of my queue because hey I can find them again and there's always beautiful patterns out there and I, with the couple of exceptions of some scrappy things that I may tackle later this year I just put the things I'm going to work on with their matching yarns so you can go if you're interested pop into that queue see what pattern I selected and what yarn to go with it. So I'm just kind of giving you guys a preview of the yarns right now, and then I'll talk about each of the individual patterns when I get to them. Um, this is a DK weight from Shalimar Yarns. I also use this for a sweater, um, and Christy sent me way more than I needed for that, even though it was like a cable jacket. Uh, this is her homage or homage, not sure which way she says it. Uh, DK Weight, this is the colorway Water's Edge, which is kind of a blue-gray. 80% uh, superwash merino, 20% cashmere, 10% silk. It is gorgeous to work with. I absolutely love it. 
Um, so like I said, I've got three skeins of that. Um, one is even already caked up and ready to go. Um, I know that's earmarked for a shawl. Uh, next, I've got two skeins of Brooklyn Tweed's Shelter, which is their worsted weight. It's actually spun um, also by Harrisville. So it's very similar to Flywheel, but this is the DK and this is the worsted. Uh, this is in the Bird Book colorway, which is a Tweedy Green. <clears throat> so again, I have two skeins of that. Uh, this is from the sweater that I knit for um, Free Spirit Knits, my book that I did. Uh, it's almost three years ago now. I think so. Anyway, this is the sweater that I knit based on the sort of theme of the wild horses that live in Arizona along the river there, Salt River. Um, another Harrisville product, this is their Highland uh, colorway is jade, which doesn't really look like jade to me, but okay, it's green. It's got little flecks of kind of um, copper and brown in it. I love this this yarn. So it's a worsted weight, but it's light worsted weight. And I have one, two, three, four, I believe four and a half skeins of that left from that project. So I have a vest earmarked for this because there's, I think, about 880 um, yards of worsted, which is plenty to knit me a vest. Uh, next up, this is Cephalopod Yarns Traveler, which is their DK weight. It's 100% superwash merino and the colorway is Casco Bay. So it's a hand dyed and it is kind of a tealy green and I have a hat earmarked for this that's got kind of some cables and some other pretty textures on it. Next, I have four skeins of um, Els Elspeth Levold's Silky Wool. So this is a 65% wool, 35% silk. It's sort of a sport weight, but I think it's listed as DK weight. And this is the color 013, which is a tweedy blue-gray, mid-range blue-gray. I think I also have a vest earmarked for that. All right, then I have two colors. Um, let me show you these. So this is the um, Blacker Yarn Company's Lioness. It is a, um, let me make sure I get the blend right. This is aquamarine, that's the colorway, and this is dark pearl. And it's a blend of 50% Falkland wool and 50% linen. And I had purchased this thinking I might use it for a design, but I had ch I changed my mind and I did a different colorways. Um, I used this and a blue together for the summer filament magazine, a couple, not this summer, but the previous summer. So I have two skeins of each of those. Um, fingering weight. So I have enough here to do a two color shawl. Um, there's about 400 yards of, is it right? Did I do the math right? Yeah. Um, so it's like 192 yards per skein. So there's just under 400 yards of each colorway. And I found a great pattern that I want to do um, called Holyrood, Scotland. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, last in the bin is a Rowan Spun DK. This is a very light DK. It's a Tweedy wool in kind of a dark gray with flecks of brown and ochre and taupe. And I've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five. I've got six skeins of this. Um, I also have that earmarked for, uh, it's kind of a waterfront front open lace vest. Now, there are two more yarns here that I'm not, I don't have to show you guys at the moment. They are things that I had started projects with last year and was not totally grooving on the pattern co combination with those yarn bases. One's a hand spun and one's a lace weight. 
So what I've decided to do with those is I'm going to rip them back. So I need to do that um, and then re-knit them. Those projects will be in the nine Make Nine mosaic, and they are also listed in my Ravelry uh, queue. Okay, I'm going to talk about the Scotland trip briefly at the end. No, I'm going to do that now. Uh, Scotland trip. I do have finally all of the information for it, when we're leaving, where we're going, uh, where we're staying, nights that we travel, nights that we do fun things like a storytelling festival. Um, all of that is encapsulated in a PDF and I will put the link to the PDF down below. Um, we have a limited number of folks who can sign up. We're capping it off at 18 and Excuse me, my husband just texted me. He's getting on his plane. Um, so the great part about that is it lets us really customize the trip so we can go places and see things that aren't really on the beaten path. Um, but it also means that when those 18 slots are filled, then that's where we cap it off and it's kind of first come, first serve. So Putting that information below. If you have any interest in the tour and have questions, please feel free to message me, email me, hit me up on Ravelry or Instagram. I'm on Ravelry. You can find me in my group, uh, Wooly Wonka Fibers, where there's also information about the trip. Uh, or you can um, private message me over there, and my username is Bunny Spinner, B U N N Y S P I N N E R, all one word. Okay. That's it for knitting. Let's go on to spinning. Okay, uh, so on my docket for later today and possibly into tomorrow, depending on how fast I get through this, I have the final bobbin left to ply of singles for my Isle of Skye. This is the Rolex that I got from Blaine Fleece and Fiber that are a combination of BFL, Thin Sheep, Merino, and Bamboo. Absolutely love the, this colorway. Um, so these are the two skeins that I've finished. And like I said, I have one more left to ply. So once that comes off the wheel, I'll know how much yardage I have, but this together is almost 600 yards right here. So, you know, I'm 99% sure I'll have another 300 and maybe a little more. So I would think I would have around 900 yards, which is pretty darn good for yardage. Might even be able to get like a lacy sweater out of that. Just saying. Um, dark purple. The purple is the bamboo, so you can see it has like a little bit of a sheen to it. And then the green, greens, and there's a little bit of kind of a chestnut brown in certain areas. Those are the wools. So I have that to ply, that one final bobbin to ply, and then this, this spin, which I started in 2018, will be done. Very excited about that. Um, up, up on the wheel after that, which I'll start next week, so I'll start it before I talk to you guys again, but probably won't have it finished till the end of January, is this braid, which is from Deep Stash, Funky Carolina. Uh, it's a 50-50 Superwash Merino Silk blend in the colorway Ice Lilac. And I'm spinning this for the Spin 15 a Day Stash Down Challenge, which you can find if, under that hashtag on Instagram, if you're interested. So that will be up next. Looking forward to that. I love spinning Funky Carolina. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That was short, kind of compensated for how much time I talked about knitting today. Um, we're gonna go on to books. And I'm going to talk about three books, four books. One will be short. Um, I finished up The Winter Sea. I was reading this last time we talked, Susanna Kearsley. This is a book about the Scottish Rebellion in 1708, but historical fiction. If you've read any of her books, this is very similar in terms of tone, flavor, type of writing. There's a little bit of magic thrown in there in the way that uh, Outlander has. Um, it's told with two storylines. One's contemporary and is an author who's writing about the events. And one is kind of this, the story that she's writing that 
is taking place in the early 18th century. Very entertaining read, you know, perfect for the holidays. Um, this was not like a brain crusher. Um, if you like that kind of historical fiction, it has a little bit of suspend your disbelief in it as opposed to a true recreation of events. Um, you will likely like this. I did find it interesting that this book is written with the exception of the main female character and her sister and obviously the contemporary like here's the writer writing about it. Um, she did actually go back and research everybody who's in this book uh, and the places and so the dialogue uh, are things that maybe she's taken pieces of from diaries or testimony or court records or letters. Uh, so there is quite a bit of good research in this and that is one of the things that I like about her books uh, and find very interesting. So again, if Outlander is your jam, there's a little less bodice ripping happening in this book, but uh, you know, good story and a fun read. Uh, the next book, and I will put links to all of the books below. Um, the last book I finished in 2018 is a book I got from my library, so I don't have a version to show you, but it's called A Week in Winter by Maeve Binchy. Um, another kind of holiday read, very light, very upbeat. If you've read Maeve, Maeve Binchy, this is a lot like her other books. It's definitely that flavor. Uh, so it is told, each chapter is kind of a different individual. The overarching umbrella that ties all these together is that there's a historic house on the coast of Ireland that's been refurbished and kind of now made into an inn slash bed and breakfast. And these are the people who work at the inn and their backstories and the people who come to visit for the opening week, which happens to be a week in winter. So they're on the coast and um, a fairly remote area. So the book, each chapter in the book talks about the woman who actually is running the bed and breakfast, the young man who works as her manager, the young lady who helps her with the like website and internet and bookings and does some work in the kitchen. And then the people who are the visitors at the inn during this week. And so they all have an interesting backstory. I guess most people do, really. Um, and so, you know, there's nothing... It's a very cozy book. This is not like an earth-shattering kind of thing. It's just a very cozy book. It's set in contemporary times. Um, not a ton of romance, but there are a few people who fall in love. Um, I did like the fact that not all of her, and I do like this about her writing, is not all of the characters have a happy ending, which is kind of like real life. I mean, there's some people who just are going to be miserable and unhappy their whole life, but I appreciate the fact that <laughs> there aren't very many of those in these books. They're feel good, you know, interesting in a vacation reading sort of way. You don't have to engage your mind too much to get through them. Um, so that was an enjoyable read and yeah, it was fun. Uh, so then on New Year's Eve, I started the first of my 2019, um, Around the World in 52 Books challenge. Um, I guess I should back up and say The Winter Sea and A Week in Winter were both ones outside my 2018 challenge. I finished that up and so I had, like, I was just reading stuff just stuff. This this is something that had been on my night table, I think, for eight months, so I felt good that I read that. Um, and Week in Winter is something that just my library, you know, if you go in and borrow books using their app, you can rate stuff, and it was like, hey, we think you might like this, so they had it. It wasn't something I had to put on hold, so I went ahead and borrowed it for the few days it took me to read it. Okay, sorry, sidebar. Uh, so the next book that I picked up was for my 2019 challenge. Um, and it is Charles DeLint's Dreams Underfoot. Um, now, I've read a fair number of other of his books. He's one of my favorite authors. 
I had not picked this book up for whatever reason, but it's kind of the first, it's a good book to read if you want an introduction into the world of Newford that he's created. Because it's a mix of a lot of the characters that appear in many of the stories, like Jilly Coppercorn, um, Jordy and Christy, uh, the professor. Anyway, um, and it also introduces you to the setting. And the settings in Charles Zalint's books are so important to telling his story. Newford is is a character in and of itself, basically. Um, so each chapter is its own kind of um, standalone short story, and it introduces you to many of those characters who he expands further in other books, or maybe that character carries the whole arc. Um, and kind of the main characters, you, they are recurring, and that's one of the great things that he does with his characters is, is that he interweaves their lives together, but they don't all do everything together. Um, there's a fair amount of magic. There's a fair amount of things that go on in other worlds. Um, anyway, I zipped through this book. I had it finished by the second. Uh, yeah, so that's how much I love Charles Delint. Um, one of these days I will get through all of his works, but at the same time, I like don't want to read too many at once and then be like, he has nothing else. I'm, I'm done. Like I've read, and he has a huge catalog of work. So it's not like, it's not like if I read five or six, then I would have tapped out. But, um, yeah, it's like savoring those really good chocolates. That's, I feel about Charles Delint. Okay, so if you're somebody who thinks you might enjoy his books, I highly recommend this one as a good starting point. Um, it's available on Kindle, and you can still buy paperback and hardback co copies of it. I just downloaded it off my Kindle. Um, so the next book that I'm reading, and I just started this one, um, so I'm maybe only a quarter, quarter to a third of the way through it, is the, called The American Boy by Andrew Taylor. This book is set in the UK between 1819 and 1820. It isn't told from Edgar Allan Poe's perspective, but he's one of the characters in it, and the book has to do with him growing up, the family, his family and his extended family, and is told from the point of view of the assistant schoolmaster at this boys' school that he's attending. And so that character of the assistant schoolmaster is what is telling the story and carrying the story. And it's very gothic feeling and a little creepy and I'm only up to the point of it that like you know something's not right but you don't know what that is that's not right. Um, it reminds me a lot in terms of the language and the presentation of um, Instance at the Finger Post by I think it's Ian Peters that I read a couple years ago, but I actually think this book is a little more accessible. Now, the weird thing about this book was it's been out since 2003. I could not find it as a standalone Kindle book. I had to actually purchase it with another of his books, which is also kind of a historic gothic mystery-ish book set during the American Revolution, which I didn't know anything about, but I thought, well, whatever, American Revolution, that's the period that I have my undergraduate and master's degrees in. How much could I not like it if I like the author? So I will probably read that book at some point because it was, I think, like $3.99 to get both those books together. And if I wanted to order the book as a standalone in print copy, it was like $21.99. So whatever. I sort of got a free book out of it. Awesome. I'll let you know <laughs> how that is when I get to it. But... We'll touch base about the American boy next time I talk to you guys in two weeks-ish uh, and let you know how that, how that book turned out. I'm sure I'll be done it by then. Okay, that's it for books. Let's move on to stitching. All right. Um, okay, sorry, I just was trying to get my thoughts together. 
Um, I did wind up finishing all the new starts that I wanted to start, that I felt comfortable starting, let's call it that, uh, before the end of the year so that I could kick off the No New Starts 2019 challenge that several folks on FlessTube are doing. Um, I think Jesse Marie's doing at least half a year. Um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy's doing the year. Obviously, Stitch and Mommy, who is the brainchild behind that, is doing it. Um, I know there's a bunch of stitchers who are doing this, and some are doing it in conjunction with Year of Whips, which I'm not officially doing, but we'll talk about that in a little minute. Old. Um, so let me show you what I worked on for the end of December to kind of get myself going. Um, this was kind of the last um, big start that I had. I think I hit most everything. I either had it started or was just about to start it in my last video. Um, and if you're interested, you can check me out on Instagram as Little Bird Stitcher, and you can go back to the end of December, middle end of December, and see what I worked on. So this is this was my last start. It's Joan Elliott's Winter Fairy. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, but I love this. I love those bunnies bunnies um, I am working this on a 20 oh sorry 32 count Jobelin this is from color and cotton it is her July 2017 club fabric um, I didn't have a name but it is this gorgeous kind of blue gray purple and I as you can see I started at the top I got her headdress and face done and then worked on her wings. And I'm back stitching as I go, so that will be done kind of as I go down. The face was looking too creepy for me to, to, not, to not do the back stitching. And I have not, I will not do the beading yet. So there's, um, see it but there's some space right here where she's got pearl like a little pearl necklace on and there's obviously like the swirly bits that are out you know around the wings and I'll do those at the very end once I'm finished um, there's little crinic like magic snowflakes and then the wings are outlined in a dark gray crinic I don't know if you can see the sparkle but it is sparkly I absolutely love it on this fabric. I think it's going to be amazing. I just, yeah. Yep, love it. Um, so I stitched on that for five days and got some good progress. That was, that made me happy. Um, let's see, let me see. Ooh, just dumped on my carnet on the floor. That's okay. All good. Um, let's see. Then I decided that I wasn't super happy with working my Long Winter's Nap um, ornament, which is a Heaven and Earth chart artwork by Donna Gelsinger. I had started this on 32 count and was stitching it one over one and really was struggling with it. Like I had a divot in my finger from trying to push the needle through. It was just too bulky. So I switched gears on it and I actually put in probably uh, 175 or 200 stitches using half crosses on 32 count to see how I liked it. I don't like half crosses. I don't like 10 stitch, whatever you wanna call it where you're not making a full cross, I did not like it. So even though I wanted this to be smaller than 12 by 12, it's gonna be on 25 count. I went back to my old standby because it makes me happy and um, just restarted it on 25 count and I restarted it from the middle. So this is where I am. I actually worked on this the 26th through yesterday, which was the 4th. So I got about 1,800 stitches put in this, which I know this is not Jesse Marie's standards, but for me, this is this is a lot of stitching at once. And let me show you where this is on this design. This is the top button, so this is where his beard begins, and this is kind of a tummy 
from up in top. None, none skinny Santa, but anyway, it's this section right in here. So this big sort of black hole of darkness is what's happening over here. So this page goes out to just about there where my index finger is, and then you can see I actually worked up to the top of it. Um, so unless this comes out in some kind of randomly chosen form, which I don't think it will, because I think I'm going to change up how I work the other selections other than full coverage during the year. Um, this one will not come out until next December, but it is slotted in for my Welcome Winter uh, full coverage fanatics project for December of 2019. So that was super fun. Really enjoyed working on that. Um, yeah, we'll be happy when that one comes out again. Um, then I also, just to give me some non full coverage ness, when I was, when we were like sitting upstairs or I was looking for something portable. I also have been working on um, Annie B's Pins and Needles. It's a sampler pin keep, which I started. The eagle-eyed among you will remember that I started this as two over two. Did not like that. It was going to be much bigger than I wanted it to be. I want it to be actually like pin cushion size, not something that you would frame. Um, and so I am. I just pulled out this little scrap that I had of 28 count even weave that I dyed myself in the color of Fangorn Forest. It's kind of a dark khaki green and restarted this one over one. I'm still using color and cotton um, hand dyed floss for all of the colors. And so I have gotten this top part done and the roof. I started in the house, I started a tree branch I brought this border down to here, so that is where I am on that. Yeah, super cute, super fun. I mean, it's an, a pretty easy stitch, and um, yeah, um, and nothing else to say there. Okay, so that's what I have worked on between the last time you saw me and today. Now let's talk briefly about plans going forward for the next several weeks. Um, so I will be working on my winter's encounter. Let me get the picture for you guys. This is a heaven and earth designs. Oh, and I should say before I wander off on that tangent, a long winter's nap was what I worked on for the cozy monthly theme for Full Coverage Fanatics. So I did that. That's all that I will work on that for this month. But but it works for that stitch along. Anyway, we're almost up to 2,000 people in the Full Coverage Fanatics group, which is blowing my mind. I don't even know where folks are coming from, but we spent myself and my co-moderators, Sharon and Kim, spent a lot of time adding people over the holidays and yowza. I am so grateful for those two ladies because there is no way I could keep up with moderating that group uh, by myself. It is, it has exploded, which is great, it, great. And I love the fact that so many people are interested in it, but dang, I could not keep up with the comments <laughs> if I was by myself, I just could not do it. Anyway, this is, as you may remember, uh, if you watched any of my videos at the end of last year talking about planning, is going to be my focus for a finish for 2019. I'm not totally sure that I'm going to get it finished, but I'm going to get a lot of lot of stitching in, in on it. This is the Mini Winter's Encounter with artwork by Laura Prindle. Reminds me of my boy Ben. Um, and last, last year, I worked on this. Let me put something behind it gets blown out. And so I had finished page one and I started page two. Now I put this hundred stitches in today. So um, there is a crap ton of white and barely there gray. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and 
So I will be very happy because in this block, I actually start this set of twigs that are over here by the little chickadee. That happens like right there. So I am going to continue to work this block down. I think if I'm not mistaken, the way that this one works, let me see. I think after this page, which ends about here, like there's two or 300 stitches more and then that finishes the bottom of this. I believe that is correct. So anyway, you will see this a lot this year because I'm gonna be working on it two five days each month. So we're up for my first five day slot with this one. Um, yeah, just plugging along on it. So we'll see. I'm kind of interested to see how far I could get on it. Um, you know, if I can put like a couple thousand stitches in it each time, each month um, or more, that would be awesome. The stitching through here is not, it's not hard. It's, there's like two colors in a block, which for heaven and earth, that's, I mean, that's easy. Um, it's just slow going when you're stitching white on white, it, especially this much of it. So you know, we're going to take the small victories and if I have to, I'm going to kind of go out of order and I'll jump up here and do a little bit more of his mane. But I love this piece, as you all might guess, because horses. Um, this one is from Heaven and Earth Designs that I picked up. I think I bought it when I bought this pattern. And then this one is part of a three horse set that my friend Lisa at Lisa Stitching and Such got me for my birthday, I think it was, year before. Not 2018, 2017. Okay, so you will see that, but know that is going on my frame as soon as I'm done with this video and eating lunch. Um, let's see. Then next up, so I'll work on that through the 10th. Um, next up, I know y'all know what this one looks like, but it's Marabellia's Stargazer. I am stitching this on a picture of this plus fabric in um, its 28 count Livana in Phantom. Let me get this organized because it's a big old piece of fabric. And here she is. Okay. So I worked on this in December. I finished up. Um, a lot of the sleeve, I worked more on her face that I'm doing one over one. I still need to do obviously some more of the face and finish the hand. I uh, did a color conversion on the hair color, but everything else is the same. So this is going to also be a focus for a finish and I think I can actually get this one done this year, which would be awesome. Um, gonna work on it five days every month. Um, along with Jessie Marie and anyone else who wants to do that. Uh, needle Minder from Denkai Designs. Yeah, so that is where she sits. I hope that I, I just would, I would love to have her done this year. Love to have her done this year. Um, and then I think that will take me to, let's see, I'll have one more project to work on. And so this goes, This I'm gonna talk about my plans kind of in a broader sense here before I talk about the specifics. I had thought originally that what I would do is do two five days slots with this a month, one five day slot to do the project that I have earmarked for whatever the full coverage fanatics theme is, and one week, one five day period to work on Stargazer. And that would leave me about 10 days every month so I could do two slots, two separate slots. I've decided that um, what I would like to do is for one of those slots, I was gonna have both of them be completely random. Um, let my Tiny Decisions app pick that, but instead what I think I'm gonna do is do just one random choice and then I'm gonna work on one of the smaller projects that I have started for 20 that I started in 2018 for 2019 because 
I'm also doing stitch from stash and I get it. Large projects take longer to finish. However, I have cut myself down to a budget of $5 a month because I figure I will run through some DMC that I'll have to replace or I've forgotten to get a thing of Krynek or, you know, whatever. But I really, really need to put together some finishes to kind of keep that credit, you know, restocked, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, since I've already started this and I've been working on this, I'm going to work on this one five day period a month until it's done. And then I'll, I'll random, um, randomly pick tiny decision app, pick the next small piece, whatever that might be. Um, whether it's a wordplay or whether it's Mill Hill, the Mill Hill kit I got started, um, or any of the things that are, you know, a small, whatever you want to call that. So this actually will be the project that comes out on the 16th. So, excuse me, I'll work on this some more and I'll just keep working on this until it's done. And this will also wind up being, whatever the small is that I have will wind up being my travel project. So I'm gonna be in DC for the long weekend uh, over, what is that weekend? The one in January, the federal holiday in January. It's not Washington's birthday. I don't know, I can't remember. I don't technically have it off, but I'm taking a couple of days to go to DC. So this will be my tra travel project for that trip. So this will come out then, and I will do the work on it, and it'll be easy to take with me because it doesn't, I mean, it's like eight colors or something like that. Anywho, uh, so that is my current plan plan and I think that will get me through I'm looking at my calendar over here I think that will get me through until the next time I talk to you guys although it'll probably be like might even be the 26th so well we'll catch up then if we need to um just a couple of quick things that were Christmas gifts because gosh I'm all talky mctalky these days 51 minutes um so I got two gift certificates uh, for Christmas as Christmas gifts. The first one was an Etsy uh, gift certificate, gift card, whatever they call it. So I went on there and I used that. Plus I had a little, I had basically thirty dollars of credit to finish out um, Stitch from Stash 2018, and so uh, I was highly enabled by Michelle over at Cozy Egg. Um, I won't link her below let me put that on here um, she was showing these little stockings from blackbird designs and I love them now some of them I couldn't find I have one that I found at a different seller these all came from Jen's stitching niche and it's March through November which is most of them so I was missing December January and February I found January in another shop, so I went ahead and used the last few pennies that I had, I think I have like 11 cents left from my credit, um, and picked these up. Uh, there's all kinds, so each pattern has three stockings, and each one has kind of um, more, it's like a flower of the month, less stylized, more realistic, and then they have two others, one of which is sort of Quakerish or single color and then the other of which is usually some other tree-ish flowerish thing so this is March I'm not going to show you all of these but like for April you know there's the one that's the flower of the month this has a part of a quilt I guess that's what they are is quilt patterns geometric patterns and then this is also the flower of the month but it's kind of stylized um I really I really like these two, for instance, for this month. I'm not sure that I would stitch this, but they're teeny tiny. They're like three by five. How cute would those be in a garland or tucked into a basket in my other room? Um, where's my favorite? This is my favorite from October. Love it. Um, so if any of y'all know where I could get either December or February of these please let me know they're from quite a while ago so they're I did a bunch of Google eBay Etsy whatever searches and I can find the ones the middle ones that I have but not that one so 
not those two. Um, and then the other thing, which I'll show you next time we talk, um, I just, I had a one, two, three stitch uh, gift card. And so I picked up a couple of um, Mirabilia's that I think I wanna stitch in the future, but don't, I don't, they haven't come yet because I just ordered them uh, Wednesday, I think it was, or Thursday of this week. Anyway, with that gift card. So um, I think, think that's it uh, if I forgot anything we'll talk about it next time um, as always thank you guys again for tuning in spending some time with me um, I hope that you have 2019 off to a great start um, yeah I'm just gonna be over here doing some stitching and some crafting um, looking forward to at least a couple of weekends here at home before kind of my travel seasons kick kick off and um, hope everything is well with you guys so best wishes for a productive and fun and creative 2019 whatever your endeavors are and I will talk to you guys a little bit later in January so take care everybody talk to you later bye